we're learning more and more about extrasolar planets, and for the first time, astronomers have discovered water vapor in the atmosphere of a planet orbiting another star. The planet is located in the habitable zone of its star, so this might even be rain. Of course, it's not all good news. It's much more massive than Earth with higher gravity, and it's probably bathed in radiation from its red dwarf star. But it's a good start in the search for habitable places in the universe, places where there might be life. Astronomers have actually known about the planet, designated as K218b for several years now, since it was first discovered in 2015 by NASA's Kepler Space Telescope using the transit technique. Kepler was watching the light from a relatively small, dim, red dwarf star, or M dwarf as the astronomers call them, located about 110 light years away in the constellation Leo, and detected a dimming every 33 days as the planet passed perfectly in between it and Earth. From these data, astronomers were able to determine that K218b is located about one-sixth the distance from its star than the Earth orbits the Sun. This is closer than Mercury. The dim star puts out less sunlight, so the average temperature on the planet is about 10 degrees Celsius. Just for comparison, the average temperature on Earth is about 14 Celsius. The transit observations also gave astronomers the radius, approximately 2.2 times the radius of Earth, making it a super-Earth or a mini-Neptune. Since its discovery, astronomers have been making follow-up observations with all the instruments at their disposal. In 2017, an international team of astronomers used the HARPS spectrograph to make radial velocity measurements of the star, tracking how the gravity of the planet pulls it back and forth from our perspective. From these measurements, astronomers were able to determine that it has almost eight times the mass of Earth, or about 3% the mass of Jupiter. And from this, they were able to calculate that its density is less than the density of Earth. It could have a significant atmosphere, or maybe even huge oceans of liquid water. Even though it's much bigger and more massive, you'd experience about 1.65 times as much gravity standing on its surface. Of course, if you were floating in the ocean, that might not be a big problem. Astronomers have been discovering planets around other stars for decades now. Studying their atmospheres is a much more difficult process. Right now, there are only a few observatories that can even detect a planet's atmosphere. One of these telescopes, of course, is NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. Because K218b was discovered using the transit method, astronomers knew when it would pass directly in front of the star from our perspective. They measured the light from the star without the planet, and then measured it during the time when the planet was transiting and compared the chemical signatures. During the transit, they detected the unmistakable presence of water. Now this doesn't mean that there's water on the surface, of course. It could just be clouds or huge amounts of steam coming out of thermal vents. But this is the first time astronomers have seen a planet that has the right temperature for liquid water on its surface, and there's water vapor in its atmosphere. It could be habitable, but is it? One of the big problems is the fact that M dwarf stars can release enormously powerful solar flares. Flares, which are many times more powerful than anything that's ever been seen from the sun. These flares are believed to strip away the atmosphere from a planet orbiting a star like this. Planets around red dwarfs can also be tidally locked, showing only one face to their star. One side would be in constant sunlight, while the other is in eternal darkness. So clearly, more research is needed. So we know there's water vapor in the atmosphere of K218b, does it rain? Are there clouds? Does it have oceans? Have the flares sterilized it? We've got so many questions, and sadly, no telescopes that can give us answers. But telescopes are coming, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, I'd like to thank Gunnar Berenius, Christian Thompson, Brett Bond, and the rest of our 812 patrons for their generous support. Educational content should be freely available to anyone in the world, and the patrons make this possible. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today and get in on the action. Now that astronomers have discovered this fascinating world, what future observatories will be coming online in the next decade to give us more answers about it and other planets in the habitable zone? 
We've done a whole episode on the next generation of planet hunting scopes getting built both here on Earth and heading out into space, but I'll give you a couple of highlights. Now I'm going to say this unironically. When the James Webb Space Telescope is launched in 2021, I suspect K2-18b will be one of the first targets that it inspects. While Hubble could only detect the water vapor while the planet was passing in front of the star, James Webb will be able to image the atmosphere of the world directly. It could also detect other chemicals in the atmosphere, like carbon dioxide, methane, and other gases, which could give us an indication if there's life there. Astronomers might even be able to work out weather patterns and cloud cover. ESA's Atmospheric Remote Sensing Infrared Exoplanet Large Survey, or Aerial, is due for launch in 2028. This is a space telescope specifically designed to observe the atmospheres of distant exoplanets in both visible and infrared wavelengths. Ariel will survey about 1,000 exoplanets and certainly K2-18b, watching as they pass in front of their stars, and using the same technique that Hubble did to measure the chemicals in their atmospheres. And then, the next generation of ground-based super telescopes will come online. Like the Giant Magellan Telescope, an ESA's extremely large telescope, due for completion by the mid-2020s. Those huge telescopes will be capable of resolving extrasolar planets directly from here on the ground, using adaptive optics to peer through the Earth's atmosphere, and they'll tell us so much more. With the discovery of water vapor on another planet, we've entered an exciting new chapter in the search for habitable worlds orbiting other stars. Although K218b probably isn't a world you'd want to visit or could even survive on, it's just the first. Over time, more and more worlds like this will be discovered and eventually, astronomers will announce they've found an Earth-sized world in the habitable zone of a sun-like star with oceans and continents, clouds, rain, and weather. And of course, I'll let you know when they find it. What do you think? Are you excited about this discovery or are there just too many planets to keep track of? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here and support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and I send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links so you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in a handy audio podcast format? So you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. And finally, here's a playlist.